What's the quickest way someone messed their life up? Viewer edition. Hey folks, quick content warning for this video. Some of these stories are going to address things such as as assault, uh, self-termination, and abuse. And so if you're uncomfortable with those topics, you might want to skip this one. It's not too graphic, but there are a couple rough ones. Story 1. I wouldn't say I ruined my life yet, but this is definitely a decision that I want to go back in time and slap myself across the face for. Christmas Eve, 2021. My dad, who had been smoking for about 30 years with various failed attempts of quitting, left his pack of cigarettes out on the table like he always did. It was midnight and everyone was asleep. I don't know why I did it. I wasn't upset, just bored and curious. I liked it. I kept stealing cigarettes and it just got worse and worse. The things consumed my life and even a little over a year later, I still have to have some form of nicotine to function. It's all I think about. It broke my dad's heart. My aunt, who's also a nicotine addict, has a weird superiority complex and acts like I'm being dramatic anytime I mention my struggle with it and I just hate who I've become. And my friend who puts me down for smoking is always asking me to hit my vape because she doesn't have one and she's even more annoying about it than I am. And I've started to hate being around her because I just know she's going to ask. And it wouldn't have happened if I just stayed away from cigarettes, knowing that I was genetically predisposed to addiction. I also struggle with alcohol. I barely turned 18. I barely turned 18. I've stolen probably $200 worth of nicotine products, and I'm probably going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. Hell, I won't be surprised if I die of an overdose or acute alcohol poisoning. Don't drink underage. Don't drink if you want to know that addiction rubs... In don't drink if you know that addiction runs in your family, and don't ever smoke or vape unless you want nicotine to consume your every waking thought. And smoking doesn't even make me happy like it used to. It's literally to just avoid withdrawals because they suck butt. If you're ever in a situation where you're offered drugs slash drinks, decline. And if you get crap for it, then leave. No substance is worth ruining your life over. And now, at the ripe age of 18, I'm fearful that I don't even have 10 years left since I'm always wanting to get high and, God forbid, I'm in a situation where temptation's too strong and I give in to using H or something. I know I wouldn't recover. Even if I don't use a bunch of illegal substances, there's still a bunch of anxiety around alcohol since I only have three years until I can buy as much as I want. Smoking isn't cool, vaping isn't cool, drinking isn't cool. Anyone who says it is, is an effing liar. First, um, I gotta say, you make some good points. Um, smoking, drinking, stuff like that, especially underage, is not worth it. Folks, you're still kind of like developing uh, permanent pathways in your brains. And if you start putting in addicting substances, from what I've seen... It makes it harder to get rid of that stuff. I personally used to smoke. I didn't smoke when I was in my teens. I smoked in my 20s for a few years. Um, and yeah, it's not super fun to get rid of. And it's just not worth it. Um, and I very rarely drink anymore because I used to have uh, some issues with that. I, I So yeah, if you're at all worried, don't get involved. And definitely not when you're underage. Um, what I will say too to our commenter is... It doesn't have to be your whole life. I've known a number of people who have shaken the habit forever. People who were like hardcore couple pack a day folks, people who were more casual about it. I've seen a lot of folks make progress. And so it's not an easy journey and not a journey I think anyone should, you know, count on making being like, oh, I know it, I'll start smoking and I can always quit. It's not easy or fun, but it is possible. So don't give up. Keep on trying. Story two. I am a chemistry teacher. One, di one year, I did chromatography with my students. For this, they had to take an M&M, put it in a beaker with a few drops of water, and then shake until all the color was off the M&M. When I explained all of this and the next steps, I kept on repeating, you do not eat the M&Ms. Juan Cade always questioned everything I said. I didn't mind. He was respectful and just curious as to why it was that way. So he came out to me asking me why he couldn't just eat it. I explained about the dangers of not knowing if the beakers were actually clean since students clean them themselves. He seemed to understand and walked off. He asked the two other teachers helping me out as well who gave the same answers. In total, he had asked four times. Two weeks later, he came up to me to tell me he had secretly eaten the M&Ms. He had fallen ill the next morning and was sick for two weeks. We didn't miss him those two weeks since it was a two-week break anyway.
I now tell this story to all students who keep asking these types of questions. Don't mess around in science labs. <laughs> Chemicals can be powerful, and yeah, like, even if you think you're doing a good job watching beakers, you don't know. And also, like, don't take weird chances in food situations with, like, cross-contamination, all that stuff. Like, yeah, chances are you might get a little sick for a day or two and be alright, but it's not a risk worth taking, folks. Like, be careful with that kind of stuff when you're dealing with unknown things that can make you ill, the consequences can be pretty bad. Story 3. I had a close friend that I knew for over 10 years die due to an OD because someone laced his stuff with fentanyl. He was close with all of us. He knew that we knew he did drugs, crystal, ketamine, etc. Yet he would always try to keep that away from us. He got me in a metal and introduced me to a lot of bands that I still listen to to this day. I remember a week before he died I was in a call with him and he was telling me how he didn't want to do drugs anymore and that they just made him feel sick. Now, Jagger was many things, but he wasn't a liar, so I told him I would be there for him and we went back to playing zombies and talking about music. A week later, and he's gone. His funeral was the first I cried at. Rest in peace, Chagger, 2002-2022. You are a brother to me. My mom feels guilty because she felt like she could have helped him, but she pushed him away to keep me from doing drugs. He was closer than family. Edit. Thank you guys for all the support. If you ever see a single crow hanging out and talking to you, just know that's Jagger thanking you. I'm thinking of getting a tattoo in his honor because he would have done the same. Story 4. The last story hits me. A friend of mine got bullied in an online group. She loved the game and she loved her friends there, but the bullying from a whole group of people plus the bullying from her in real life family, her sister called the cops on her for walking on the same sidewalk, were just too much. She ended her suffering last year. She would have been 30 this month. And it's not getting easier. You think of who they could have become, what you would have done together. For me, I lost my girlfriend, a friend, and a lot of joy for the game. All happened because one single person had a problem with her and couldn't stop dragging more people in and all went from bad to hell. May she rest in peace. Story 5. Some guy I went to school with was an absolute soccer prodigy. constantly had conversations with college scouts seeking his skills. However, he was still young, but they kept in touch with him. He was still a freshman. As we got to be juniors and seniors, he just stopped coming to school, preferred to smoke and skip classes all the time. Turns out he had scholarship offers for him to some major colleges, but when they saw he stopped coming to school, they all got pulled. Now he still plays soccer out of school and is still amazing at it, but goes home early for his construction job he got. Not bad, but he could have been a pro player in many people's opinion. I mean, that sucks to, like, just waste away an opportunity like that just for skipping class and doing crap that you're not supposed to. Like, I know I talk a bit about how, like... Stuff in high school doesn't matter, but that's, like, mostly trivial stuff. Like, you know, people, you know, making fun and cliques and popularity. Like, that stuff doesn't. But when you start to do things that can affect your future, that's the kind of stuff that you can end up regretting, folks. So be careful with that stuff. Not to say that you can't still have a great, happy life just playing soccer for fun and doing construction. That's absolutely legitimate. But... If he really did have dreams of being a pro player and stuff, then that might stick with them and be a bit of a sore spot. Story 6. So, my neighbor. I knew him since I was little, a year younger than me. I never talked to him that much, only when his cousin, who was my age, was around. A few weeks ago, a married couple were killed by one of the drivers that was doing an illegal street race. A few days after the incident, I found out that it was my neighbor who happened to drive the car and crashed into the married couple's car. He is 17, and he's going to spend a very long time in jail for two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Honestly, I don't feel any pity, but just pure hatred. Why? Because the married couple have seven-year-old twins, and they aren't going to see their mom and dad again. Edit. Thank you for the reply. I'm fine. You should say sorry for the losses of the family that died or prayers if you're religious. I never knew the victims. It was just on the news. My neighbor, who is now in jail, is the one I knew. Never really talked to him at all. Hardly saw him. Story 7. My stepdad's older brother. Not so much over a few minutes, but over several years of neglecting himself and his health. Diabetes of the wazoo to the point of him having his foot amputated from how drastically his type 2 developed. 
Worse yet, he's now a 58-year-old retired cop who insists on living with his 80-something mother and having her take care of him despite cops in Chicago having pretty good coverage for medical needs and other such things for retirement. The only thing keeping him alive is sheer spite. Oh, he also verbally abuses said mother, which we only found out after a recent visit from my parents. My stepdad is waiting for his crappy brother to finally die. Story 8. I worked in the Marine Corps in 07 and a few weeks in a recruit punched a drill instructor. Within the week, the offending recruit was dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps. Also, it was down in front of the battalion of recruits. He was made an example of what happens if he hit a DI. If you don't know what that means, a dishonorable discharge is worse than a felony. Story 9. Ten years ago, I saw a woman who's a first grade teacher ruin her life by drunkenly mauling me with her car at a bus stop. Got a 15 year sentence but was eligible for parole a while ago. I don't know if she's out by now. You could maybe say I unintentionally got everything ruined by happening to sit there that day, but I don't want to have a victim mentality even though my recovery took everything just to get by. Everyone I thought I could rely on flaked. It's continuing even today because of the complicated permanent damages. My medical bills have reached $1.6 million recently, and I only just recently got compensation after a decade of waiting over the equally complicated legal problems of the situation. All while my health insurance wants over $200,000 back because I didn't hurt myself, someone else did. And therefore, I couldn't take a single penny of the initial meager $500,000 the teacher's insurance had for 10 years. Ah, boy. Um... I'm sorry that you're going through that, that medical bill. I mean, <sighs> the healthcare system and medical bills and stuff, especially in this country, but I'm sure in some other countries too, are absurd. And the fact that you are struggling with that because of like medical insurance companies or driving insurance or whatever, insurance companies can be just awful too. I mean, there's so many crappy things involved in this and all of which could have been avoided if that woman did not drink and drive. And I will never have uh, any sympathies for drunk drivers screwing up their lives. That's just, don't drink and drive. Just don't. <laughs> story 10. Concerning story 12 from the original video, oh boy, some boys tried uh, this trick to get my nephew in trouble. Thankfully, the police quickly realized my nephew was innocent because the idiots didn't know him as well as they thought. They were suspended, had to pay a large fine, and lost a lot of good college opportunities last I heard. All because they didn't like the fact my nephew could beat them at Halo. Story 11. My mom married my, now, ex-stepdad two years ago. Keep in mind, I am 14 years old. One day, I took a shower, and as I got out, I found said stepdad's phone on the bathroom counter. Camera pointed directly at me. Apparently, he had recorded me a 14-year-old girl taking a shower. He has not been tried yet. Update, he's getting a trial soon. Update 2, videos corrupted, hoping there's enough other evidence to convict. If not, they're gonna charge him with tampering with evidence. Story 12. A guy in my school lost his life in a motorcycle accident. Before that, he had a loving girlfriend, was very well liked by his whole class. He was the class clown, but in a wholesome way, and did very well academically. He only lost his life because he couldn't properly control his new Kawasaki just yet and most likely didn't wear a helmet. He crashed face first into an ambulance on the 31st of October, 2021. I went to the memorial my school did for him and even now, almost two years later, the shrine, don't know a better word, for him is still standing. He wasn't even 18 yet. Story 13. Two kids who are already troublemakers independently brought a BB gun and C-class drugs. Teacher caught both of them and police searched their homes. One of them got kicked out by his parents and lives on a side street outside the local shopping center. The other one got excluded and lost all of his friends for bringing C-class drugs to school just so he can show them he actually had those drugs. Story 14 reminds me of a friend I had in middle school and part of the way through high school. We had a lot in common early on, but then over the course of eight months, he went from college band nerd to edgy metalcore fan. I actually asked him what's the deal with the aesthetic change. 
It was like he had suddenly become a completely different person, went from making fun of teen parents to wanting kids before he graduated, liked thrash metal and grunge, then suddenly hated it and started liking new metal bands he was making fun of months before, was critical of our religion but still went along with it to being anti-theist, stuff like that. He got all defensive and was half yelling at me saying how this was the person he always wanted to be but never had the freedom to live it. I was like, you know I wanted to help you but I can't when you're acting this way. A few years later he dropped out with his girlfriend, she got pregnant by him so they got engaged. Well after she had the kid she bailed along with the kid, broke off the engagement and the cherry on top is, and he now has to pay her child support despite dropping out. Wouldn't be surprised if he's dead now. He was honestly a good guy but caught up with the wrong crowd who just wanted to use him and he was vulnerable to it because someone he thought was cool noticed him. I'll say this, um, I think a lot of people go through something similar to what this friend of yours did in like middle school and early high school. A lot of us jumped around between cliques and, you know, basically trying on personality hats. You try on different hats because you're figuring stuff out about yourself and it feels like you're not connected to anything. You're flitting between this and that and the other. Um, not everyone does that, but there are plenty of people out there who do struggle with it, you know, just finding what makes them them, you know? It's it's a good time to do that, too. But you do want to be careful that you don't push things too far and also push away, like, friends and stuff. It sounds like this person just got a little too caught up in these things, and unfortunately, it had consequences that affected their life well beyond high school. So feel free to experiment. Don't worry so much if your personality is jumping around. You're finding things out, but... Just keep in mind your friends and your future while you're doing that. Story 15. Two stories. Around my freshman year, this kid who was an absolute jack-off in all respects, insulting teachers, threatening literal elementary schoolers, and so on, got an F in music class. Don't ask me how. So he does the next logical step, begins loudly swearing in class and calling the professor insults that no reasonable person would ever think of saying to someone who has a 40 over them. He then began crying and begging the professor not to say anything to the principal. For this, he got thrown out of school the following day. No idea what happened to him after that because he was genuinely such an a-hole that no one wished to keep in contact with him. Another one is when me and a friend were taken to the principal's office regarding some political posts we made online that were considered inflammatory. Nothing xenophobic, just making fun of a random local politician from my country, not American. I apologized and said that I had no clue that it could be misconstrued as offensive or inflammatory while my buddy and his infinite wisdom yelled at the principal called her senile and told her a bunch of other crap. I attempted to calm him down, but he refused to listen. I got off free. The principal had to call a meeting with all the professors to determine whether he was to be expelled or just suspended. Story 16. I had a boss who used to be addicted to Crystal. She supposedly had been sober the whole time she was employed, but one night she went on a 48-hour bender and skipped work and stole $500 from our safe to get more. She went on the run for a few months before she was caught across the country living large with pounds and pounds of illegal substances in her house, alongside unregistered firearms with the serial numbers filed off, and multiple other symbols of being a drug lord like guard dogs and booby traps around the property. Story 17. I knew this kid as he was the younger brother of my friend at the time. My friend and I would fade as friends, not on any bad terms. Our friendships just faded and slowly, I would befriend the younger brother. We would hang out at times when school was out, ride bikes around the neighborhood, go to the play park that was around the corner from us, build robots from a subscription magazine, played Pokemon on Game Boy, etc. We never kept in touch after my family and I moved across the country. About a year or two later, my mom gets a phone call from an old neighbor and family friend. After it finished, she calls me down to my room and asks, Do you remember kid's name? I said I did and asked why. He had been caught or reported for aring a younger boy. Not only did he F his life over, he F'd the lives of his older brother and mother so bad that they couldn't show their faces around the town anymore and apparently fled the country to Australia. I would name the guy, but I don't want to cause any more undeserved stress for his mother or brother as they have to live with the fact that the youngest is a pedo, even if they are protecting him. I'm just going to add in here that the commenter did put in an edit with the name saying, I, what the hell, why protect, you know, pedos like that? And I agree, I don't 
feel like protecting a pedo, I'm not going to put up the name and everything because... A, YouTube can be kind of like, oh, this is, you know, inciting people to go after this person, which I, you know, don't want to incite anything like that. But also because it was a fairly common name. There are many people in the world with that name and just being like, ah, someone with this name is a pedo. No, I I don't want to because that could negatively affect someone who is completely innocent in this whole situation. So... I just wanted to say, let's not put those actual names up and stuff for that reason. Not anything to do with protecting those monsters. Story 18. I had a friend in my school. It was a school that was populated with Muslim students like me and non-Muslim teachers. We were outside doing recess one day. It was snowing, but the sun came out that day. And one of my friends decided it was an excellent idea to throw a piece of ice at a stop sign. This man's got the strength of an anime protagonist and chucked the rock just barely over a car. He got suspended for a week because of it, and before he left, he told me, See you in a week. It may not be messed up my life, but it just goes to show this man would do anything. Also, a note is that both of us were good boys in class. Story 19. I didn't so much ruin her life, but she still had to try and get stuff fixed. I met her in the sixth grade. She was already in a bad situation with an abusive Christian mother and abusive stepdad. Mom used religion to guilt trip her about being gay and pass off the abuse as for punishment. My mom and I let her stay over a few times. At one time, she had to run because of her stepdad. All the while, she took her trauma out on me and SA'd me. She tried to start crap at school, and that was enough for me to call her out, and I went to the counselor for her bullying me. My mom went in, mentioned she was homeless, and she was kicked out of school according to her. Bad reason to get kicked out, but F her. Just because you're going through hell doesn't excuse you trying to drag others to your hell or taking it out on them. I'm somewhat okay. I moved away from that town and I don't have to worry about her trying to stay at my place to keep her safe. Why didn't I tell my mom? I didn't realize it was SA and thought it was normal because I never learned proper intercourse ed. Plus, I doubt she'd believe me. First, I am sorry that you had to deal with that. And even if you don't feel like you can tell your mom or something... It's something that I encourage you to maybe talk with a therapist or something about because that kind of stuff can weigh on you in ways that you don't even realize. Um, And yeah, you do make a point that possibly what led this person to being like this and doing this stuff was, you know, having abusive parents. And that is unfortunate. And I have sympathy for that. But as I think I've said on this channel multiple times, um, my sympathy does not erase their accountability um when they take actions like this i might be sympathetic for the situation they had but once you start affecting other people you're still accountable for it and i hope something is done story 20 i have a cousin with whitney houston syndrome most talented dude you could ever meet good basketball player straight a student college grad funny as heck hot girlfriend dude had shady friends though that got him into drugs guns and whatnot now he's in jail with a mental illness and his friends are nowhere to be found growing up i would have never thought he'd end up like this it's really sad for me he's always a lesson to stay clean and avoid drugs especially pills and stuff it can mess you up bad Story 21. This one happened in my school before I reached high school by two years. There was this popular guy. Everyone liked him, even the teachers. He's very silly, friendly, and plays a lot of football, soccer to all Americans reading this. So nothing bad about him. He and his friends wanted to go to the beach mid-school semester, so one day they were leaving. One car was not in a fit, so they got like, I don't know, two taxis or two Uber drivers. You get what I mean. And they all said to the two drivers, whoever reaches their destination first gets a big tip. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. This can go horrible in many ways, and guess what? The drivers accepted. So they began racing each other just for the big tip. Then at some point while driving, there was a lot of cars, not enough to make traffic, but still quite a bit. So the drivers, still wanting the big tip, they started doing very deep turns trying to get ahead of the cars in the way. Both, at some point, did a turn too deep. The car was not stable, drivers lost control, then hit a barrier who did not have their seatbelt on, got thrown out of the car, and hitting the ground and barriers very hard. That popular guy broke his neck and died. The other was severely injured but survived because he landed on the sand. The highway was in the desert. 
Everyone at school got very sad that when we tried to start our school day, the sheer amount of sad people had made the school to send everyone back home and no school for the rest of the week. What a way to F with your life, your parents, friends, and the school. Story 22. Warning. Wouldn't listen to this one at work. One kid in my high school cohort graduated now was known as the kid who did stupid things. For example, drank half a bottle of vodka before a significant test and had to leave halfway during said test as well as rumored as being involved with C and paid for a red room. He got my school's full suspension, which was two weeks whilst it was investigated. Last year, it was rumored that he had inappropriately touched some people over several occasions. Once the rumor got out, we did not see him again until exams. Last I heard, he apparently had a warrant for his arrest. Story 23. I've got one. One of my football coaches from junior high was hit and killed by an idiot who was drunk and high on a combination of H and weed. The idiot parents said it was the coach's fault for jogging at 5 in the morning. When his funeral was held, his wife gave a speech about forgiveness, acceptance, and moving on. Because of her, he didn't get a single second of jail time. But because of what happened, he can't drive, find a job, or even talk to anybody without being demonized. He screwed up his life, the coach's wife, and their son's life. Not to mention all the people who miss him because he made a positive impact on their lives. The really sad part is he was only 32. Story 24, buddy of mine got a text from his on-again, off-again girlfriend that had just cheated on him and wanted to meet up to talk about things. They started arguing and she pulled a knife on him. He's a marine and easily disarmed her. Unfortunately, she had the other guy she was sleeping with hiding close by and he attacked. My buddy ended up stabbing and killing the guy. He still has about 17 years left in prison and the girl got off scot-free even though she talks regularly about how she set them both up because she likes when guys fight over her. How does a person who regularly talks about how she did this still have any friends or allies left in her life? Like... If you're admitting that you did something like this that got someone, you know, sent to jail and this person, you know, it sounds like was defending himself from this other guy attacking him. And I mean, I don't know how it went down. I can't judge that. But still, like if a friend ever admitted something like this to me, I don't know that I'd be friends with them anymore. I don't think I could just be like, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that. But buddies forever. Like, no, that's messed up. Story 25. My best friend who was the closest thing I had to a brother was probably one of the most talented people I've ever known. He was amazing on guitar, was an accomplished artist on canvas and art on motorcycles and cars. He got hooked on Crystal. His second wife, a complete piece of crap, got him into it. They ended up getting divorced. Anyway, two years ago, he was stealing catalytic converters off cars for drug money. He tried stealing a catalytic converter off a van on the side of I-40 in Tennessee at 3 a.m. He was using a cheap scissor jack and talking on his cell phone with his crystal dealer while he was cutting it off. And the jack failed and the van fell on him, crushed his head like a grape. They had to use his ID and his first wife, one of the sweetest women I've known, to identify him. Brian, I miss you. Story 26. Story 1 reminds me of being in science class one day and the teacher had just handed out small dishes of a white powder-like substance, then went back into the supply cupboard. When she came back out, one boy at the back of the class shouted it was salt. The teacher congratulated him for figuring it out, then asked how he did it. I tasted it was the response. The teacher was very unhappy. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.